Uh, I have a question for you all today to start out with. When was the last time you guys saw someone perform an act of kindness? I'll let that soak in for just a second. Um, in my opinion, kindness is becoming harder to find in our society today, which is why it took you all a second to think of one, obviously. Um, but for an example, you all can turn here, turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy verse, or chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. We there? You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, or proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be puffed up with pride. Oh, I skipped something, didn't I? They'll be cruel and hate what is good. They'll betray their friends and be reckless. Be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. But unkindness is nothing new. So one of the best examples on kindness I could find was Joseph. Everyone knows the story of Joseph from Sunday school and the coat of many colors. I think at least I do. But before I continue... Let's review Joseph's place in the lineage of Israel because he's really close to the buildup of the entire, or the entire place of Israel. So the start of it was Abraham, who's the very beginning of the buildup of Israel. And then there's, or he's the father of Isaac, who's the father of Jacob, who's the father of Joseph. So he's only the fourth in line of the buildup of Israel. You don't have to turn here, but I'm going to read to you all Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 through 4. You can turn there if you want, but you don't have to. I hear some pages, so I'm going to wait a second. We there? Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him into old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him, which is pretty bad if you ask me. But now I'm going to tell you the story of Joseph and kind of where it all started with his dreams. So one day he walked out into the field where his brothers were working, and he said, hey, listen up. I have this really cool dream I had. I want you all to listen to it. And his dream was that they were all out in the field, and they were uh, all out there working, you know, gathering sacks of grain. But then... Joseph and his sack of grain stood tall while theirs all bowed down before him. And they were all laughing at him, telling him he's this idiot because he thinks he's going to rule over them one day and he's not even the oldest. So Joseph kind of just walks off, I'm guessing. But the next day, uh, he walks into the house where they were all eating and his father was there, Jacob. And he says that, I had another dream. You guys all got to listen to this one. It's better. And the dream this time was that he was in the center of the entire universe and that all the stars and all the planets were bowing down before him. And once again, they're all like, what are you saying, dude? You're not even the oldest. Like, you're not going to rule over us. You're, you're like literally the youngest person here. And his father is like, Joseph, do you really think you're going to rule over us one day? You're not the oldest. And so secretly, though, Jacob was worried that maybe this was a a dream from God that sent to Joseph saying that he was going to rule over him one day. But, you know, he kind of shrugged it off so it wasn't anything because he's like 15 or something. He's got weird dreams. <laughs> so one day Jacob tells Joseph to go out into the field, once again where his brothers were working because that's all they do, um, and to go check on them in their flock just to see what they were doing. And so I, while he's on his way out to this field where they're all working, he, or the whole his brothers see him walking up there and like, oh, it's Joseph the dreamer, weirdo. And they're, they talk about killing him because I'm guessing that was more common back then because he couldn't get caught as much. But so they're all t are thinking, yeah, let's just get rid of him and see how his dreams happen there. 
So they all decide we're just going to kill him, except for one brother named Reuben, who I'm guessing is the nicest brother to Joseph. He says, why don't we just throw him in the well, and then it won't be on our hands that we've killed him, secretly planning to go take him out of the well later on. So they're all like, yeah, that's a, this guy's smart. Stick him in the well. So they rip him off of his robe that he was wearing, the coat of many colors, and they throw him down in the well. And Reuben walks off going to check on the field or the crops and all that once again in the flock while his other brothers sat there and ate. But as they were eating, the grand caravan came by on their way to Egypt. And so they're all like, hey, why don't we just sell Joseph to these, this grand caravan? They'll take him over to Egypt and we'll get some money out of it. You know, pretty good deal. So they take Joseph and Reuben wasn't here. He wasn't a part of the plan. So they take Joseph and they sell him to the grand caravan for 20 shekels of silver, which isn't, sounds like $20 to me, but it's not. <laughs> so Reuben comes back and looks in the well and is like, what'd you guys do with Joseph? And they're like, well, we sold him to the grand caravan. And they're like, here's your share. Probably like one coin or something weird, I don't know. And so, you know, he can't really do anything at this point. They've already left, and so he just kind of takes his share and walks off with it. And while he's on his way to the Grand Caravan, they take his robe and dip it in goat blood and take it to Jacob, his father, and say, is this the coat of your favorite son? And he says, yes. And they all say that he must have been killed by wild animals because obviously they're going to lie unless they just want to tell him that they killed him or something weird. So as this is happening, Joseph is being sold at an auction in Egypt. And as he's being sold, he ends up sold to a guy named Potiphar, the second command of all of Egypt, which is a pretty big deal if you ask me. But instead of just being this really bad person and mad at his brothers and God and all this for putting him in this place, he decides to show kindness and work and, you know, actually like for, at least likes his leader and stuff, Potiphar. And so very quickly Potiphar notices this and sticks him in command of this household and all the property that he owns. But unfortunately, one day while Potiphar was gone, his wife, I don't, I don't know his name, but I don't think it actually states it, but his wife ends up falling in love with Joseph because I'm guessing he's very good looking, probably looked a lot like me. <laughs> Red hair, you know, that's the best looking. Um, but anyways, so she tries to get Joseph, and I don't know how old he is at this point, but he tries to get, she tries to get Joseph to lay with her, and he refuses, saying it's against his God and his leader, Potiphar. And so when Potiphar gets back, she decides that no man was going to treat her like that because she's the wife of the person in second command of all of Egypt. So she tells Potiphar that Joseph tried to lay with her and stuck, or Potiphar in return stuck Joseph in jail for something he didn't do. And while he was in jail... Something actually decent happened. I've got to take a drink of water real quick. Mm, that's good water. But anyways, while he's in jail, people are getting into these fights and stuff, and he always breaks them up. And very quickly, once again, the jailer, the guard, notices how kind Joseph is to all these people and sticks him in command of all the prisoners in jail. So he just keeps becoming the leader pretty much everywhere he is, except for at his house. Um... But while this is happening, two guys are thrown into jail for making fun of the king, Pharaoh. The butler and the baker, the best names. And they come to Joseph, obviously as the leader of the, all the prisoners, and they're like, hey, we had these terrible dreams, and we need you to interpret them. And he interprets the dreams of the butler and says, in three days you'll regain your high position in Egypt as the butler. And he tells him to put in good word for him because he was falsely accused. And the baker walks up to him and says, you want to interpret my dream? You know, like his would be pretty nice. But he tells him, I'm very sorry. Because in three days, you will, your head will be lifted high and you will be executed. And which honestly would kind of suck knowing in three days you're going to die. But um, So in three days, one is executed and one regains his high position in all of Egypt. The butler, obviously. And so Joseph told him to put in good word for him. And, of course, 
He forgot. So two years go by. He's in jail. And so the, the bet, or Pharaoh had this dream and is like, tells his butler, obviously because he's the butler, you know, I had this terrible dream and I need someone to interpret it. And he's like, hey, I got just the guy for you. And he goes, to, he goes to the prison and takes Joseph out immediately and brings him to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's like, man, I just had this dream. And are you the person who can interpret it? And he goes, no, but my God can. He can interpret dreams. So he says, tells Pharaoh to tell him his dream. And his dream was that seven fat cows came out of the Nile River. And then right after, seven skinny cows came out of the Nile River and ate up the fat ones. And Joseph tells Pharaoh that there will be seven years of just amazing food and crops and grain, and there will be seven years of famine right after. And Pharaoh notices this and tells Joseph that he's the wisest man in all of Egypt because his God is with him. So he sticks him in second command of all of Egypt, which I think I'd be laughing at Potiphar over there. And sticks him in command, or second command of all of Egypt, and he even wears uh, Pharaoh's ring to show that he's in command. So at this point, wouldn't you think that Joseph would be mad or bitter at his brothers and God because he ended up here and stuck in jail and all these places, and now he regained his high position, but wouldn't you think that he'd be mad about it and just, you know, he wouldn't be very kind? I think I would be at least. Actually, I know I would be. But anger is not what Joseph chose. Instead, he shows kindness to his brothers and kindness that comes from Joseph's God, not Joseph but God. He couldn't have achieved this without God. He wouldn't have been able to show that much kindness. But when the seven-year famine began and the land, or like Joseph had prepared pretty well because he knew that there was going to be a seven-year famine, so he had stored tons and tons and tons of food and crops and grain and all that stuff just so that way he would be prepared for the famine because there was a lot of people in Egypt. But uh, well, now I'm going to read to you guys. You don't have to turn here unless you want to. Uh, Genesis chapter 42, verse 3 through 8. Lots of pages turning. We there? So Joseph's ten older brothers went down to Egypt to buy grain. But Jacob, or Joseph, no, Jacob, sorry, wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin, go. Benjamin's uh, Joseph's only full brother, by the way. Uh, go with them, for some fear and harm might come to him. So Jacob's sons arrived in Egypt along with some others to buy food. For the famine was in Canaan as well. Since Joseph was governor of all of Egypt, of sell, or he was in charge of selling grain uh, to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. Uh, Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. We are, or where are you from, he demanded. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We are come to buy food, because as it stated, the famine was in Canaan as well. Uh, so Joseph devised a plan to test his brother's attitude and saw that they had changed for the better because how much they cared about Benjamin. I'm going to read another verse here. That way I don't have to write it down. But you don't have to turn here either unless you want to. Genesis chapter 45, verse 1 through 8. I can see people turning pages. Okay. Joseph couldn't stand it no longer. There were many people in the room, and he had said to his attendants, Out all of you. So he was alone with them, or with his brothers, when he had told them who he was. Uh, then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me into this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years 
will last five more years, and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. As you can see here, this is exactly what Joseph had stated in the very beginning about ruling over them. When they came to him to buy grain, they had their faces to the ground bowing before him, which is what he said in the beginning. But through all this, you know, the struggles and hardships that Joseph endured, he was able to forgive and show kindness to his brothers through God. He didn't do it through him. He did it through God. And that's how he was able to forgive them for what they had done. And so you guys might be wondering, what does kindness look like? Well, I'll tell you. You just got to turn your Bibles to uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 26. Here's my face. We there? Okay. Someone's turning out there still. But the Holy Spirit produces kind of fruit in our lives, this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passion and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives, which would be really cool. So through the Holy Spirit, we can show kindness to others. So how can we show kindness to others? Well, here's some quick examples. Uh, one time, this is just a real easy one. Everyone shops at Aldi's. I was at Aldi's and this older lady had a piece of paper and she, she had a cane and stuff. She couldn't run, obviously. And it, she dropped and it was real windy and it started flying around. It, did, it went pretty far, let me tell you. So I ran over there and got it and bring it back to her. And it was just an easy, simple act of kindness that I did in like one minute. I had an extra minute in my day. But another example that comes to mind, uh, my mind at least, was one time I was at Walmart with my grandma Bobo. And her p cart was pretty full, you know, getting all those snacks for me. <laughs> and so this, old, this older gen or gentleman came up behind us, and he had like just a few items, like maybe three or four. And so Bobo told the man to go in front of us. I mean, that was just real simple. Once again, it took us like an extra two minutes. We had two minutes re or the rest of our day. But of course, the ultimate act of kindness is Jesus, for him to die on our cross, and even though we we're just sinful people, and I think that's just the coolest act of kindness that could happen, is because he gave us all the opportunity to become saved and go to heaven with him. I hope you all were inspired uh, by a sacrifice and to show kindness to others in your daily life, and with that I'm going to pass it over to Shane.